Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be taking a look at the structure of triglycerides, of phospholipids, how they are made and broken down, but also the properties of triglycerides, phospholipids and cholesterol. So this is spec point H, I and J from biological molecules from the OCIA specification. So the first thing we need to look at is the structure of a triglyceride. Now as the word triglyceride implies, tri stands for three and the Therefore, it means that a triglyceride has three fatty acids, as you can see in this diagram. Now, in the exam, you can get away with drawing a simple diagram like this. And don't forget, pictures paint a thousand words. So it's always worth drawing a diagram in your answer to support what you're trying to say. Now, these fatty acids are joined with an ester bond to the glycerol molecule. And on the next slide, I'm going to show you a bit more detail about how that works. And again, here is a little bit more simplified diagram, but won't get you as many marks as the one on the left hand side. So this is how this works. Um, I have a glycerol and yes, you do need to know the structure of this. I have seen it quite a few times in multiple choice questions where it asks you to identify glycerol and fatty acids amongst other biological molecules. And on the right hand side here, you can see an example of a fatty acid, which are basically just hydrocarbon chains. Now these arrange themselves in a way so that they glycerol binds to the fatty acid, removing water, and this is where the water is removed from H2O. So this is a condensation reaction because I'm removing the water to for, from these molecules to form water, and I'm creating in this molecule an ester bond. And here's a bit more of an example of how this works. So you can see I've got my three molecules of water that have been removed because I've got three fatty acids joining onto my one glycerol molecule to create on my right hand side here a triglyceride molecule and again that's a condensation reaction if I wanted to break those ester bonds I'd had to add in that water again in a hydrolysis reaction So there are different types of fatty acid chains. I can have saturated or unsaturated fatty acid chains. The top diagram here shows a saturated fatty acid chain. The reason why this is saturated is because it has no double bonds and every single carbon is saturated with the hydrogen molecules. Whereas in the bottom diagram, this is an unsaturated fatty acid because it does have a double bond between the carbons and it is not fully saturated with hydrogen atoms in this particular diagram. Now this creates different properties within the overall molecule of the triglycerides and fatty substances that it creates. And this is why. So in a saturated triglyceride, I'd have my glycerol that's bound to my fatty acids using three ester bonds, which aren't actually shown on this diagram. And in an unsaturated fatty acid, I'd have, a, again, the same kind of structure except for here my glycerol is bound to fatty acids that have a kink in the chain so wherever I get that double carbon bond double carbon carbon bond it creates a kink within the chain and it causes the, the fatty acid chains to bend and this means that the unsaturated fatty acids if I had lots of these lying next to each other they can't lie as close to each other and therefore the unsaturated fatty acids create what's known as a less dense substance such as oil. So my triglycerides that I made of saturated fatty acids would create my more solid fatty substances such as my lard and margarine, whereas my unsaturated fatty acids that have got these kinks within the fatty acid chains will create more fatty substances known as oil because they create a less dense substance. Now, a phospholipid is slightly different. A really good exam question here would be to compare the structure of a phospholipid and a triglyceride. Really nice question, that. And on the left-hand side here, in this left-hand side diagram, that is a beautiful way to represent a phospholipid. As you can see here, I have two fatty acids instead of three that I find in my triglyceride. And instead of having that third fatty acid, I have what's known as a phosphate group here attached to my glycerol instead. Now the phosphate group is polar so it creates a water soluble area on the phospholipid. So this part here at the top with the glycerol and the phosphate group is known as a hydrophilic head. And really important terminology here is that the hydrophilic head orientates towards water. We can't really get away with saying love, water loving and water hating uh, or moves towards or attracted towards. They really like the term orientates towards water. Whereas these fatty acid chains are nonpolar and insoluble in water and these guys are hydrophobic. So I've got hydrophobic chains which orientate away from water and hydrophilic heads that orientate towards water, which is the terminology they're looking for in the exam. 
can. Now, fatty, the phospholipids create what's known as a phospholipid bilayer. And again, key terminology here that they really, really like in the exam. The reason why I have a bilayer, don't forget bi stands for two, is because that I have water on the outside of the cell, but also I have water inside of the cell. So therefore, those fatty acid tails will orientate away from water into the middle of the membrane where they're protected, if you like, from the, the water from using those hydrophilic heads. And that's how we get that bilayer. Now, if the water was to surround everywhere, including around the outside and in the middle, they would arrange themselves in what's known as a micelle structure instead. Now, we need to know about the triglycerides function. Anything here in a red box is from the mark scheme, and we need to know the, these properties and functions of the triglycerides. So, the users are respiratory substrate because they release a lot of water when they're broken down, and this is why animals like um, camels store fat inside their humps, not water. They're insoluble, so it affects water potential. They're used to make a lot of hormones. Uh, they're waterproofing. They act, they're really good for buoyancy. And they're also really good at forming multiple layers of insulation, such as the myelin sheath, which you'll look at when you get onto nerves in upper six. And they're also really good for aiding fat absorption, for example, vitamin A. Now, cholesterol, the good thing about cholesterol, we need to know what it does, but we don't need to know its structure, which is here on the right hand side. Now, in an exam, they may very well put cholesterol in there and ask you to talk about how the structure of a triglyceride or a phospholipid compares to cholesterol, but you do not need to know this. You just use your knowledge of a triglyceride and of a phospholipid to make that comparison of the provided information. Now, what we do need to know about cholesterol is that it's a four carbon ring structure and it's there to regulate the fluidity of the membrane. Now, it's a bit of a funny one, this, because at low temperatures, cholesterol increases the fluidity of a membrane, but at high temperatures, it decreases the fluidity of the membrane. And again, that is something that we need to make sure we remember in a red box taken directly from the mark scheme. So that's everything there that we need to know about lipids, their structure of the triglycerides and the phospholipids, the synthesis, which is to make and break down. So that's condensation and hydrolysis of those triglycerides and also the properties of each one of these molecules and how they help living organisms. Guys, good luck with your exams and all the best. Remember, don't use the words it, they, amount or size and good luck.